August 17th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Psalms chapters 90 and 91 from the Old Testament O Lord, you have been our protector through all generations. Even before the mountains came into existence or you brought the world into being, you were the eternal God. You make mankind return to the dust and say, Return, O people. Yes, in your eyes, a thousand years are like yesterday that quickly passes, or like one of the divisions of the nighttime. You bring their lives to an end, and they fall asleep. In the morning they are like the grass that sprouts up. In the morning it glistens and sprouts up, at evening time it withers and dries up. Yes, we are consumed by your anger, we are terrified by your wrath. You are aware of our sins, you even know about our hidden sins. Yes, throughout all our days we experience your raging fury. The years of our lives pass quickly, like a sigh. The days of our lives add up to 70 years or 80, if one is especially strong. But even one's best years are marred by trouble and oppression. Yes, they pass quickly, and we fly away. Who can really fathom the intensity of your anger? Your raging fury causes people to fear you. So teach us to consider our mortality so that we might live wisely. Turn back toward us, O Lord. How long must this suffering last? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loyal love. Then we will shout for joy and be happy all our days. Make us happy in proportion to the days you have afflicted us, in proportion to the years we have experienced trouble. May your servants see your work. May their sons see your majesty. May our sovereign God extend his favor to us. Make our endeavors successful. Yes, make them successful. As for you, the one who lives in the shelter of the sovereign one and resides in the protective shadow of the mighty king, I say this about the Lord, my shelter and my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. He will certainly rescue you from the snare of the hunter and from the destructive plague. He will shelter you with his wings. You will find safety under his wings. His faithfulness is like a shield or a protective wall. You need not fear the terrors of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the plague that comes in the darkness or the disease that comes at noon. Though a thousand may fall beside you and a multitude on your right side, it will not reach you. Certainly you will see it with your very own eyes. You will see the wicked paid back. For you have taken refuge in the Lord my shelter, the sovereign one. No harm will overtake you. No illness will come near your home for he will order his angels to protect you in all you do. They will lift you up in their hands so you will not slip and fall on a stone. You will subdue a lion and a snake. You will trample underfoot a young lion and a serpent. The Lord says, because he is devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he is loyal to me. When he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him when he is in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him honor. I will satisfy him with long life and will let him see my salvation. God, I was just writing an email to a friend of mine saying we don't know if we have minutes or decades. That only you know that then only you know if you're going to keep us here on earth to do more work for your kingdom or call us home. I know my choice. (laughs) I want to go home. Um, But I am honored and blessed that you are keeping me here to continue to do your work. And thank you every day I wake up that that is one more day that you feel the need to have me down here to do the work of your kingdom. But we don't, but we don't know. I have a friend who is, quote, I'm going to get to that God stuff later on. I just have other things I want to do now, like get a big paying job, a house, and a fast car. (laughs) And for the most part, most of us listening to this video and me who's recording it have been there. We want the worldly things because we've been given one of the best marketing pitches ever by Satan. That these are things that not only do we want, 
not only do we need, but more importantly, he has pitched them to our ego. It's something that we deserve. Ah, and if you were thinking at all about connecting some dots, you'll remember that was the same thing he pitched Adam and Eve back in the, the Garden of Eden. When he told Eve, but you deserve this. Why has he told you you can't have this? Of course you can have this. You deserve these things. Playing up to their ego. And yet, God, I know that if I have a few minutes left, or if I have a few decades left, whatever that looks like, I now know that I want to live it for you. I don't want the worldly things to grab hold of me and take away my time and this includes and i know people listening to this are going to have a hard time with this some of them but this includes things like tv and movies and certain books and certain friends and certain activities that even though they may not be quote unquote bad there's still things that take time away from doing the work of your kingdom to be relentless in our pursuit of what your will is in our life I think too often we give you maybe 2% of our day if we're really doing good and the rest of the time is ours. Let's say that we devote an hour each day to you, which I know that most of us don't, but let's say we devote an hour each day studying your word and maybe we'll ramp that up on Sunday to two hours. Um, and, and I totally realize that I'm being on the very generous side of that. That is less than 5% of the time that you've given us here on earth. 5%. That's not even 10% like we tithe. We're not even tithing 10% of our time. We're tithing 4.7% of our time. It gets kind of scary, God, how how much the world takes over in our life and how much we allow the world to take over in our life. And, and I know that you, you created this amazing world for us to also enjoy it and enjoy the amazingness of it. But that's such a, a fine edged sword for us because we get so caught up in enjoying the world that we get caught up in the worldly things. God, I... I truly hope that the people listening here don't have things happening in their lives that make them realize how, how precious time is. I've had a lot of people recently who are close to me pass away, um, kill themselves. And I have other people who are dealing with basically death sentences with cancer. And, and I know that you can come in at any time and change that, of course. Um, but I have a lot of death situations going on around me or end of time here on the earth situations. And it really brings it to the forefront of how little time we actually have in the scheme of things. In the thousand years that it's, that it's talking about in the psalm, we have such a small, small space in that timeline. And your timeline is not a thousand years. It's this endless timeline and we're such a small, small speck on it. God, let us love generously. Let us forgive generously and show others grace and mercy as though it is not a rare thing, but something that exists in abundance in our lives. God, allow us to live every moment as if it's our last and live it for you so that our lives, our very humble lives, are reflecting who you are, that our humble lives are glorifying you in the short amount of time that we do have here on earth. God, I thank you for this life. I thank you that you have made it eternal. That I go from this life into getting to be home in your presence. And I'm very excited about that. But while I'm here, allow me the strength and the power and the desire and the, and the will and the path to do what it is that you've called me here on earth to do. Help me to not get sidetracked by worldly things, God. To not get sucked into other situations, other relationships, um, other common things such as the internet and TV. God, I'm just so honored and blessed. 
that you have chosen each of the people listening to this video to do so many different things in your kingdom. I hope and pray that each one of us is intentional about that time that we do have, whether it's a few minutes left or a few decades. In your son's name I pray, amen.